May 2021, Sheila T. Resnick, aged 91, the Morris family. My mother's family arrived in England in 1902 from Russia and had their surname Petiofsky changed as the ship docked in London. Perhaps no one could understand them, but they were just told Alex Morris. They had six children born in Russia, Rubin, Mark, Ike, Kate, Leah and Stella. Izzy was born on the ship and I believe was not officially documented until the First World War. Ray and Wolfie were born in London. As a young child, I remember going to Cable Street, which was near the town of London, on the tram every Sunday to have tea with the Morris family. Mark had moved to Australia before I was born in 1929. I remember the rest of the family and my many cousins, except Dory, Anthony and Jackie, who were born later. We always paired off in ages every Sunday, so I was always with Ken, one of Auntie Leah and Uncle Sam's sons, and Sheila, a daughter of Uncle Ike and Auntie Dora, because we were the nearest in age. So all the cousins stayed with their own age group. The cousins I knew the least were Uncle Reuben's because they lived across the water south of the Thames, whereas the rest of the family lived on the north side of the river. I remember Joe well. His mother died young, so he was brought up by Grandpa Alex and Grandma Esther with Uncle Wolfie. I remember Leslie, Alfie, Doris and Beryl, and eventually the identical twins when they returned from the Norwood Orphanage at five years old. Doris was young and in charge of the family. The family stayed close to Bubba Esther and Auntie, and Auntie Stella after Zayda died because she didn't marry until 1938. Aunt Ray never married. She had a gentler nature, and Aunt Stella was such a domineering person. When the war began in 1939, it was two weeks before my 10th birthday, and I was evacuated from my home for five years, returning in 1945, so my life had changed completely. My parents kept in touch with me, but I did not really see the Morris family. Later in life, cousins met quite often, as everyone was always invited to sympathise if there was some sort of occasion in the family. In my early years, I was always close to Auntie Lear, who was a lovely lady and who never seemed to worry and took life but it came. She always did everything the easy way, and I remember her sitting at her kitchen table peeling her potatoes. My mother always did everything the hard way, and I secretly wish that Auntie Leah had been my mother. She died young, just a few weeks before my daughter Louise was born, and we named Louise Lieber Esther after her. I was also close to Uncle Wolfie, who lived to 101 years old. I saw him often, and he always told me stories about the Morris family. I always kept in touch with his daughter Jackie and her late husband Edis. Another close cousin was Aubrey and his wife Lily, and their two children, Francis and Michael. Aubrey was always there to help the family any way he could. He always kept the family together and was a good man. He had a party for his 80th birthday. We have a beautiful photograph of our huge family to show it. I also had a long relationship with my cousin Ken until we moved to America in 2003. And he died from cancer. 
Ken never married, but was always in my life, except for wartime. He was a youth club leader at Ilford for many years, and also a member of the Duke of Edinburgh's scheme, interviewing the youngsters before their joining. Although we did not see all the cousins often, everyone kept in touch with my parents, Kate and Sam. I can remember Joe and Una living with us before I was married, and Leslie and Alpha used to visit Leswing Road if they were in the area. No one ever talked about Beryl, but we saw Harvey and David, the twins, and in later years, I saw Doris. My parents always made Seder, Pesach, and it was always a large get-together of the family. My mother was a whole night cooking and feeding the family who came to our Seders. The rest of the family always, always went to Auntie Stella and Uncle Ben, who lived in Stamford Hill. After Uncle Ben died, Dory, their daughter, who never married, but lived with her mother, Stella, who still saw herself as head of the Morris family. Now in 2021, at 91 years old, and all the technology, I am in touch with many of the grandchildren of my first cousins, which I find to be very rewarding.